What's up everyone? So in this video we're going to be going over how we afford to travel full time. This is a question we get on a weekly basis, almost a daily basis. Um, yeah, a lot of people out there are curious on how us and even how other people on YouTube are able to afford to just be constantly traveling. And a lot of people ask if we're like millionaires or if our parents are paying for it and stuff, which, yeah, it's neither of those. And we're going to be going over it in this video for you to understand a bit more of how we've been able to fund our travels and, yeah, what we're doing currently to make money. So we'll start with the main thing that was savings. We saved up for almost two years and we were able to save sixty thousand dollars and that was because we thought that would be enough for us to travel for two years i got that value of sixty thousand because i came across a blog from a guy i think he's called expert vagabond he said that for two years he had saved up thirty thousand but that's just for himself so that was fifteen thousand a year for himself to travel the world so i always had that value in mind that we'd need thirty thousand each and we didn't save up 60,000 in two, two years. years. We already started with about $25,000 because just from generally saving, we don't yeah. spend that much. So yeah. we already started off with quite a bit of money that we was probably going to use to spend on our house oh, or wedding. Yeah, or something like that. But we ended up using it for these travels. Yeah. And in the beginning, we didn't know about YouTube like a, like a, a way of making money. We were just planning on traveling. Yeah, traveling. Nothing to do with work. Using our money, savings. our savings. And only later we found out about YouTube and we started to think about that. And now we're gonna just talk about a few things that we did to save money during those two years. And I think the main one was that we didn't get a wedding party and that's usually expensive so we we never really had this desire of having like a big wedding or anything, so that helped us a lot. Yeah, because I'm not sure how much that would cost in like the US, but I know weddings are usually really expensive, so yeah. possibly, I don't know, like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000? Yeah, depending on Maybe the some of you guys knows, but weddings are really expensive, so we are married, we just did a, what do you even call that, like a civil? Yeah, civil wedding, and then we had a dinner with my family and some friends. But, but no was, big wedding party. Yeah, we probably just spent, I don't know, $1,000 in yeah. total for everything, everything. And all the documents and everything. Another thing is that we never bought a house. We never owned a house, so we only rented. And once we got married, we actually looked for a cheaper place, still a, a nice place. But before that, I was living with a different roommate and I think I was spending about $200 extra to live with this roommate. So that obviously saved me an extra $200 since we was living further out of the city center in Houston. So places are a bit cheaper. And we also looked for a place that had a gym so that we didn't have to pay for a gym membership, would, which would probably add up to around $1,000 as well. Uh, I, I, knew. I knew. Yeah, in, in a year. Yeah. So we found a apartment block that had its own gym so we didn't have to pay on that. So yeah, we never had like a mortgage to pay. And uh, when we bought a car, it was second hand. I didn't get a brand new car. Obviously, the moment you buy a brand new car and you drive out of the store, goes down in value straight away so it's kind of like a, a waste of money really unless you really like cars but yeah we had the second hand car i had that for four years never had any problems luckily we only needed the one car because we worked together in the same office yeah. so we could drive to work together we didn't need two cars and we never bought expensive furniture or expensive decoration items because we knew that we we're going to do this uh, travel thing so we everything that we did when we were living together in Houston was already thinking about saving money so we didn't think it would be good to buy expensive things or many things for our house because we knew that we would have to sell them yeah so um, ju just the fact that we knew we was going to be traveling within two years time just made us not buy a lot of stuff because why are you going to mm -hmm. buy a lot of stuff if you're going to get rid of it and uh, yeah you're able to get stuff cheap on like Ikea or Amazon and we yeah. st it's still good quality furniture, so we did that as well. Uh, another big thing was we started cooking all our meals. So a lot of people, when they work, they go out for lunch to have meals together, right? In a restaurant, that's what we would always do. So you don't have to cook as much at night. 
but then we realized how much you save just on cooking your own meals so for example in houston probably the average price of us eating out is about 15 dollars each i'd say yeah no, that might even be average. shooting low yeah. you can get higher than that so let's say it was 30 dollars a day that we'd spend on just having lunch together at work in a restaurant that would be what 150 dollars a week and in a month that would be six hundred dollars yeah so if you think about it that's six hundred dollars saved a month over two years so that's loads of savings obviously you're still spending on supermarket food but it's a lot cheaper and at that time i was pretty much vegetarian so buying stuff like grains beans lentils rice usually can get big bags really cheap um, meat and fish is usually a lot more expensive so even that way i was saving i wasn't doing that to save money that's just my diet but mm -hmm. yeah i think that was another way we really saved a lot of money just um yeah not eating out as often and i think even if we go out um on nights out we probably spend less on alcohol and things like that we try and save money that way and our job in Houston was actually an average wage it wasn't like a super high paid job or anything but obviously if you're able to save in dollar the dollar is a powerful currency in, um, in a lot of different countries not so much here in Europe I guess but if you go into like Southeast Asia or South America places that we stayed yeah dollar can go a long way and also during that time to save even more money, I decided to start working in the oil field, which is not something that I wanted to do at all, but it was just a good way to save money. Cause basically when you're working in the oil field, usually you'll go for maybe like two weeks or a month. And during that time, all your expenses are covered. So you're not spending on food or accommodation. So that means basically my salary is all saved. I'm not spending any of my salary whilst I was in the oil field. And I did that for like over a year. Yeah, the bad thing about that was that I used to stay at home alone for yeah. two weeks every month or something. So but that was a bit of a sacrifice because yeah. Carol, Carol had just moved to Houston and pretty much straight away, I was already disappearing for like two weeks, months sometimes in these oil fields leaving her alone in a place that she's not used to with no friends properly so it was kind of like a sacrifice but we knew that we was doing it for this uh, trip yeah mm -hmm. so all this went on for like two years which is a hell of a long time i think even during it you'd actually think like are we actually gonna go on this trip because yeah. you just wait in so long and so long and uh, that's just a value that we tried to hit 60,000. You don't need that at all. We've met pretty much everyone we meet didn't start with that. No. We've seen people that have just started traveling on like $5,000 something. Thousand. Yeah, way cheaper. And once you travel, you see there's different ways to, to make money. Some people will work in hostels for like free food and uh, free accommodation. Or work online, not just YouTube, but other stuff. And that goes on to the next thing, which is what we're doing right now, YouTube, right? Yeah, so after we started to plan our travels, we, I think you started to, to watch some vlogs online of people who were traveling full time and doing videos. I was just looking for travel inspiration yeah. to just find out places to visit. And then I realized there was these people that were actually making these videos as a, yeah, for a job. I didn't realize that just an average person like, me and Carol or the other guys could just pick up a camera and be filming. I didn't even know you could make money off it. I didn't even know what a YouTuber was, to be honest. I didn't really watch YouTube or follow Instagram that much. So yeah, I came across this idea and I'm kind of like OCD with things. So yeah, straight away yeah. I was like, oh, I'm gonna buy a camera. I'm gonna try doing this, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think anyone really believed that I would keep doing it. Yeah. Cause I'm always like that with things. I get like super addicted and then within a month I forget about it, but <laughs> Yeah, yes. with vlogging, I stuck Different with it. with vlogging, but yeah, at the beginning we just started to make some videos when we were doing like a weekend, ho uh, weekend getaways or, or a week vacation. Or a week vacation because we were still traveling. But that's uh, that's a really good thing that we did because we already started a channel because uh, you guys may know that the beginning of a channel is the hardest part and that's where most people just give up. Yeah, because obviously in the beginning you have zero subscribers. So you're putting out videos and you have zero subscribers. So it's almost impossible for people to, to find your videos. So I think that was the best thing that we did because we started the channel a year and a half before, before we before. travel full time. Yeah. 
So I think after that year and a half, we had about 3,000 3, subscribers. subscribers. And like Carol said, it would just be when we'd go on our annual vacations. I think it did make us try and travel a bit more because mm -hmm. we saw it as like an investment because, and it, and it worked because we go to places near Houston in the Caribbean. A lot of our audience is from those videos like Puerto Rico, uh, Mexico, Belize. Yeah. We just do these quick trips that were close and still in beautiful places. And then at the time they didn't really get views or money or anything, but a few videos did really well and that gained a few subscribers, our mm -hmm. Brazil videos as well. Yeah. And like Carol said, it, we just were able to pass that initial really tough hurdle of YouTube, which is just getting anywhere in the first place. And I think only after a year and a half, we finally got our first like paycheck, which was like $40. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was super happy. I was like, no way, mm -hmm. I actually made some money, even though it was just $40 after a year and a half. Mm -hmm. But that was pretty much the month before we left to the Philippines for the first time in February 2019 and then from then on it's just been well it's going up and down yeah but uh, it's not like an easy job because some some places you go you're gonna have more views some places you go you're gonna have less views and we don't like to travel because of the views we like to travel because we like the place or we don't like the place yeah the money is just up and down yeah. the the first year we didn't really make any money but the the bits of money that we'd get monthly, maybe it would be like a couple of hundred dollars and stuff, at least would help with expenses like food. It might cover the food cost for the month, not mm -hmm. not the whole cost of traveling. So I think the first year was just, it was helping out. Yeah, it was helping digging, out. Digging less into our savings, basically. Yeah. And another thing that helped us a lot is that in the video description, all of our videos, they have a Airbnb link. If people sign up using that link, they get a credit on Airbnb and we also get credit on Airbnb. So that helped us a lot with our accommodation costs. Yeah, a lot of people signed up because basically everybody wins. If yeah. you sign up using the link, you get a lot of money for, the, for a free stay somewhere maybe or some help towards a stay and we get money back. So in Southeast Asia, we could usually always find accommodation between 10 to $20. Yeah. Yeah, and when somebody signs up and stays somewhere, I think we'd get about $25. So basically every sign up, once they would complete their stay, that was a free night for us staying somewhere. And loads of people signed up because mm -hmm. like I said, everybody wins, you get money. So that helped loads. So like I said, the, the couple of hundred that we make off YouTube might cover food costs. And then we had like stuff like Airbnb credit that would cover our accommodation costs. The only thing we couldn't really cover is like transport and yeah. visa costs and nice. insurance. Yeah, so I'd say the first year was not making any money, but as months went by, pretty much the YouTube money was going up and up and we just have to dig less and less into our uh, savings. Mm -hmm. And yeah. probably only the last few months, we've actually got to a point where we're either breaking even or even making money now, some profit. Yeah, a, a bit of profit, yeah. Yeah, kind of cause of COVID as well, cause obviously we ended up being kind of stuck in Philippines for mm -hmm. seven months. And during that time, we weren't traveling around a lot, so you didn't really have many like travel costs or um, the fees of entering places. Yeah, and since we were renting a place for a longer well, period, it was we, cheap. Yeah, it was cheaper. Cheap. And now here in Portugal, even though Europe is not as cheap as Philippines, but the thing, the fact that we are sp staying with your parents, uh, it's we're not paying any accommodations so or transport. Or My dad transport. has a car, so I think even now in Portugal, it's even cheaper than Philippines because for, for us, yeah, and we just eat at home the majority of the time. So we're still not making like loads of money, but at the moment we're not really digging into our savings anymore at all so that means we can continue traveling mm -hmm. for even maybe years if it continues like this we don't know what's going to happen and yeah. as carol said youtube's up and down there's never a fixed salary so um yeah it's just just how to judge how much you're going to make you never know it's kind of weird working that way not having like a fixed salary I'm gonna make a separate video really digging into how we make money on YouTube, the sponsorships, things like that. And um, yeah, just go, just dig a bit deeper into the statistics and explain how YouTube really works. That'll be a separate video next. And the last thing is how we save money while traveling. The things we do to keep our costs low. 
and I think the main thing as you probably see in our videos we usually don't stay in very expensive places just sometimes and we try to buy food in local places whenever possible and also travel like local, local. so using like the, the local transport local buses and stuff not always comfortable sometimes it makes the traveling days way longer yeah. more stressful uncomfortable but those are the kind of things we've had to do to keep the the, tra the price low and i think in southeast asia we would usually always try and stay in places lower than twenty dollars mm -hmm. Yeah. In the beginning, we did try hostels and stuff, but it's just really not our vibe. Uh, and sometimes it's not even that cheaper because it's usually like a per person. A per person, so it's two per two two people, and then it ends up being like the same place of an Airbnb for the two of us. That's another reason why we haven't stayed much in hostels because of the Airbnb credit. Yeah. And in in private rooms, you can sometimes even get it cheaper than than a hostel price for two mm -hmm. people. So. But still, even the private rooms we stayed in are usually cheap places. And as Carol mentioned, we won't try and eat in really fancy like restaurants and stuff. It's changed a bit now recently because we are making a bit more money on YouTube and stuff. So we're a bit less strict. But in the beginning, the first months where we really pretty much had no income at all, we were really like stingy and tight. So we do all the local traveling. And, yeah, we'd, we'd argue with people that are trying to, trying to ch overcharge us, which is super stressful. Obviously, yeah. as a foreigner, you're getting overcharged on a lot. And the beginning of our travels, it was very uh, stressful because of those situations that we had to sometimes argue with someone that was trying to overcharge scam us, us or yeah. something. And that's why we don't think we can keep traveling like that because we are full-time travelers. So imagine going through that same every single day stress every single day so sometimes we try to just don't care about the price that much and yeah we just try to now we're just trying to uh, travel like in the middle not so uh, backpacking mode but also, also not, not so luxury, luxury mode <laughs> yeah. we still try and save money on other things like flights we mm -hmm. usually go on some crazy routes to get to a country because it's usually a lot cheaper than like a direct flight so a lot of the time on the sites, maybe you have to do like two or three layovers for a much cheaper price than yeah, just going straight there. So we still do that because um, mm -hmm. it's usually a big difference. So there's little things like that that we have done to save money. And we do hope that with this channel one day we can start making profit and still save money. We're not going to spend all our money because we like to save and we never know what we're going to want to do in our future. Right now it's just travel, probably for a few more years, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we still like to always make savings because yeah, I think that's important. And that's the reason why we travel in, in, in the, the first place. place. Yeah. So I think that's it for this video. And if you guys want to help us keep traveling and extending our travels, you can help by using the links that we have in the description of this video and all of our videos and some of the, the links are discounts or others just uh, links for you to buy stuff that we get a small percentage but you pay the same so hopefully that cleared it all up as you can see we're not millionaires there's loads of different reasons why we've been able to save save up the money for this trip as i mentioned and even though sixty thousand is a lot of money as we mentioned at the start we didn't have a wedding and we didn't own a house and pay a mortgage and stuff like that a lot of the normal costs that the majority of people have and that also wasn't an easy decision it was it was scary at first but I think the moment we quit our jobs and just started traveling all the fear went away but I would say there was a lot of fear and anxiety before we finally made the move but so we don't regret yeah we don't regret uh, this decision <laughs> Yeah, so there's a million reasons of why we're still able to travel and afford it, as you can see from this video. So hopefully you found it useful. And just as always, thanks for watching and supporting us. And we'll see you around. Bye.